Coach Sheldon Harrison. There never been no comparison. You're live on the show. Sit back and have a listen. All right, all right. LDWMMAC. This is your boy, Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Sheldon Harrison Comment Sports Show Live. Okay, so this is a video response to my man, Jason Rose. Okay, uh, Jason Rose is the guy, and he definitely he moderates. The, the Lions Den Women's Mixed Martial Arts Community fan page on Facebook. Um, you can definitely go there and you can be a member. Jason Rose is on top of everything. And I tell you what, if Jason Rose hadn't found it, that means it ain't happened, okay? This man is searching everywhere. You know, he, he don't have a desire to make videos, okay? He don't want to do that. But Jason Rose is just on, on it. Like, he's on it. And, you know, words can't express, you know, how appreciative I am of Jason for taking time out of his day, man, to do this. But Jason enjoys this. He enjoys putting up this stuff, man. And Jason Rose is the man. But this is the page. And you're definitely welcome to come and be a part of it. He puts videos up. He puts links to articles. Jason Rose does it all. Okay. And shout out to Jason Rose for doing this. Um, I'm going to go ahead, though, and make a video response to my man, Jason. And here's the thing, okay? So Jason said, Coach, what are you, a fanboy? And you got to know Jason Rose. That's just how he is, man. Uh, Coach, are you a fanboy? Uh, no. <laughs> no. And a lot of you that know me know I'm not a fan of Aliba Lane McFarlane. Matter of fact, I'm not, I can't even stand the way she talked, like, uh, you know, that she can go in here and whoop Valentina's ass. And everybody here know damn well she can't whoop no Valentina. But, you know, it is what, I'm not a fan. But Jason, I, I'm biased. But I'm balanced. And on this case, I think I got to be a little bit balanced for somebody I don't really like as much, okay? I just, I got to. Um, am I on the Bellator payroll? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> oh, if I was on the Bellator payroll, guess what? It'll be Scott Coker day every day. <laughs> but I am a fan of Scott Coker. Don't get that down. I'm a Scott Coker fan. I, I just am. I can't help it. Okay, so the question was posed, do I think Aliva Lane McFarlane is being protected at Bellator? And, you know, I have to disagree with that. I, I, well, i tell you what. I disagree with that for now. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay, I can't, I can't agree that she's being protected. I can't do that now. Not right now. I got to see how everything unfolds, okay? I want to first start out by looking at the resumes of a lot of people, okay? This video is going to be a while. Um... So, Alima Lay McFarlane, she's the Bellator champion, okay? You know, girl, she is 11-0. and 0. Everybody they put in front of her, she beating them, okay? I don't think they protect her. Number one, and I, the, 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 the fights that you see that are circled, okay? The ones in red, these are significant, okay? To me, these are very significant fights. The other fights, like she fought against Rebecca Rube, them, them fights don't matter. Yeah, Rebecca Rube like 40 years old, okay? Hey, you know, ain't nobody talking about that. But now Alejandro Lore, I have a hard time to believe that they're protecting her and they put her in there with Alejandro Lore. Okay, Alejandro Lore probably, uh, between her and Kate Jackson, they're the top two flyweights. Okay, the top two, you know, Aaliyah Lemmy Farlane obviously is number one. But I think they're top two flyweights in Bellator. So why would they protect her? Like, I don't understand. Why would they protect her? Why would they protect her from Lore? Lore is as dangerous as they come. And I think everybody who listening to this video, you guys can probably sit here and agree that Alejandro Laura is tough. But I'm also going to tell you there's some politics involved too. And when I'm talking about in the case of Juliana Velasquez, there is some politics involved. And I'm going to tell you, Bellator, I started to discover that they have a pattern. And I'm going to show you guys the pattern. And you guys are going to be like, wow, I never noticed. That's why I'm doing research, okay? Then they gave a Valerie Letourno. I mean, okay, would you put your rising star in here with a veteran like Valerie Letourno? We know who Valerie Letourno is. She was in the UFC. And Jason, also another argument that we had was Valerie Letourno let go or did Valerie Letourno leave under her own accord? Jason, I'm going to show you exactly what happened. Stay tuned. Okay. And then Veda Arteaga. Veda Arteaga was on a two-fight win streak. The biggest win came, or one of her biggest win, you know, came when she beat Denise Kilhos. She put Denise in a guillotine choke and won that fight. And I'm going to tell you the pattern. And then you got Kate Jackson, who, you know, yeah, I was a little hard on Kate Jackson, but Kate Jackson earned the right to fight for the belt. Kate Jackson was also winning. 
if there's one person on this list who I probably thought may have not deserved a title shot, it may have been Vader Arteaga. Okay, now some of you may argue, well, what about Alejandro Lora? I don't think she deserved it. And I'm going to show you why, okay? So let's look at the resume of Alejandro Lora. Let's take a look, okay? Okay, this is Alejandro Lora. And I'm going to highlight the fights of hers that I thought are probably the most significant. Okay, now look at the very, very bottom. There's a fight that she fought, a fighter by the name of Sabina Mazo. And you guys know Sabina Mazo, okay? Sabina Mazo is in the UFC. Sabina Mazo was the one that had those two viral head kicks that went viral. Um, Alejandro Laura took that girl to the distance, man. And let me tell you something. Alejandro Laura is as tough as they come. Alejandro Laura has a combination of a lot of things that it'll get political. Number one, Alejandro Laura has the look, okay? I mean, she's a beautiful girl. Folks, if you can't see that, then you're blind, okay? Number two, Alejandro Laura is finishing people. She's finishing them, okay? She's not just beating them. She's finishing them. Now, I don't care what, I don't care who you are. If you got a promoter, first of all, you got the look and you can finish people, you're probably going to get an opportunity. And that's just what it is. You're going to get an opportunity if you're a combination of both. And I'm not saying that, you know, Alejandro Laura deserved a title shot. But why in the hell would they put her in there with somebody who finishing damn near everybody she get in there with? Guys, I, I just personally don't think that's protection. Okay? And Alejandra Laura, she fought Juliana Velasquez to a split decision. Okay? Now, of course, this happened after the events of the of the heavy of the title fight. Okay, this happened after the events of the title fight. But you can see if this girl done took Juliana Velasquez to a damn decision, a split decision, on top of that, uh, she dangerous. Guys, come on. Is that protection? Here's another. Let's look at the next resume. Okay, let's look at the resume, okay, of Valerie Letourneau. Now, Jason, I'm going to highlight something for you. And I want you to take a look at this, okay? Uh-oh, move it back. I want you to take a look. Okay, you see the fights in yellow, Jason? Valerie Letourneau was on a three-fight losing streak. Listen carefully. And you know in the UFC, if you're on a three-fight losing streak, you know what that mean, don't you? You know what that mean? And plus, she's 30, what, 36? She was 35, 36 at the time. I think when, when she had to leave. Let me see. Valerie Letourneau probably was about 34. You 34 in the UFC on a three-fight losing streak. You know what that mean. They finna get you out of there. Okay, she can tell you, oh, well, you know, uh, you know, I had to, they didn't have my division. I was being drained. She can say that all she wants. This right here, uh, look, the UFC, y'all know how the UFC act. Y'all know how they act. The more you lose, they're going to get you out of there. Okay? Now, some people like Jessica, I, Dave survived. Somehow they survived, and I don't know who they who loved them the most. But somebody loved Jessica, I. <laughs> somebody did. I don't know who. Maybe she, her and Dana, I, who knows, okay? But you're 34 years old, you're past your prime, and you've got a three-fight losing streak. They're going to get rid of you. And this is the case of, of Valerie Letourneau. It's just what it is. Now, what did Valerie do, though? Okay, Valerie Letourneau, she came in, she beat Kate Jackson. Okay, now she beat Kate Jackson. Kate Jackson, at the time, had only like one loss in her whole career. Kate Jackson was whooping everybody's ass. Valerie Letourneau came fresh out of the UFC, beat the hell out of Kate Jackson. Okay, there it is. She beat Christina Williams, the girl that messed up Heather Hardy's face. Christina Williams was making a lot of noise, had a lot of buzz. Okay, Christina Williams. I think Valerie took Christina's O. Okay, Valerie took Christina's O. So, that gave her a title shot. They gave her a title shot automatically. Okay, it's just what it is. Okay, I actually feel like Valerie Letourneau, I thought she deserved a title shot. I thought she did and they gave it to her. Now, we got to look at time frames and dates. We got to look at all of this stuff, okay? We got to do it because I'm going to break this down even further. Let's look at the resume next of Veda Arteaga. Okay, now these are the fights, in my opinion, that I thought were significant. And any other fight that I don't have listed, oh, the Bruna Ellen fight was insignificant, okay? At the time, you know, Bruna is just too small. She too small. And it seemed like beating up Bruna Ellen appears to be like the rite of passage, Okay. And the reason why I didn't think Veda Arteaga deserved a title shot, that's just me, okay? She lost to Bruna Ellen. You know how many, you know how everybody just been whooping up on Bruna? 
That seemed like that's the right of passage, and she didn't get that done. She lost a split decision to Bruna. Okay? But in Veda's defense, though, Veda is actually a very, very, very small uh, flyweight. She's small. And Veda would go into that category. I think she needed to be a strawweight. Okay? So that's in Veda's defense. She beat Emily Ducote, who, you know, again, that seems to be somebody else. That's a rite of passage at Bellator. They love some Emily Ducote at Bellator. But her big wing came at the hands and she won against Denise Kilhos. Now, this one, Jason, maybe we can question this, okay? And I'm, sh I'm shaking my head, you know? How does that give her a title shot? I just, you know, and this is no disrespect to Veda Arteaga, okay? I'm a fan of Veda. I just, I can't understand because Denise is a still, you know, Denise could still be considered a prospect in MMA, even though she's four, what, she's four and one in Bellator, four and two overall. Maybe Denise could still be a prospect. Consider that. Okay? But Denise Kilhos, that's her name. Now, I want y'all to understand the, the pattern of Bellator. Remember that I told you, okay? It's got to be a combination. Maybe you can fight real well. It's got to be looks. And if you got a combination of both, you're going to get an opportunity. Or, here's a third category. If you beat somebody, you beat them that they hold in esteem. And Denise Kilhos is somebody that Bellator they really got high hopes for they got high hopes for and Denise got to get a couple of significant wins and she's going to be in a title shot it's a matter of time now Jason I would agree with you if you said Veda Arteaga didn't deserve a title shot I didn't think she did either okay so that's one on her resume that I kind of shook my head that's why I said I'm not really sure that she's being protected but I can't really say right now that means that my opinion can probably change and Jason just stay tuned Okay, next, Kate Jackson. Okay, now we see Kate Jackson's resume. Okay, here it is. And I'm going to put down all the significant fights she fought. All of these fights on her resume were significant, okay? Um, she lost to Valerie Letourneau, but she came back and beat Yankova. Yankova is very tough. Y'all know who Yankova is. That's the girl that's being sponsored by the white supremacist uh, you know, t-shirt company. Y'all know her. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm always happy when she loses. And then Alina uh, Ochnikova, the veteran, okay? And she fought Alima Lay McFarlane. She also beat Colleen Snyder. Colleen Snyder's a veteran. She done been in there against a lot of people. Um, and, uh, you know, Kate Jackson calls uh, Colleen Snyder to actually uh, hurt that knee. Kate Jackson wasn't playing around, man. She went in there and she pieced her up, pieced her up good. Um, the, the Yankova win is a solid win. The Ochnikova win is very solid, okay? Um, now, remember I told y'all, they have to have a combination of beauty and fight or they got to be in here and they got to whoop the hell out of somebody so bad that you want to see them beat the champion up like that. What well, is the case of Kate Jackson, okay? I think Kate Jackson, I think she earned a title shot. However, I even said when the fight got announced, Kate not going to beat Alima late. Uh, Kate went in there and she really didn't want to throw hands. Now, of course, Alima Lee uh, Farlane took the social media. And I know that Alima Alay McFarlane probably saw the video, okay? She saw it. And Alima Malay was talking about, uh, you hit me hard and I still got scars today. Alima Malay, listen. Alima Malay, look, look, shut up. Shut your ass up, okay? You know damn well Kate Jackson wasn't even competitive. You went in there and whooped Kate's ass. Kate, what did, Kate, Kate didn't win and throw no damn punches. Go watch the fight. But Alima Malay is trying to save face. You see, Jason, this is why I'm telling you that not right now. I don't think they're protecting her now, but if something happens, I'm going to agree with you, Jason. I'm going to agree, but Alima Lay doing damage control. Alima Lay know that this girl couldn't do nothing to her. Kate Jackson got a couple of shots off, landed a few times. That's it. Alima Lay dominated this fight. She dominated this fight from start to finish, okay? I don't know what fight Alima Lay before Lane was in, okay? Hell, maybe she delusional. Who the hell knows? Okay, Alima Lay McFarlane say some dumb stuff. But I got to say, why would they put her in here with Kate Jackson? Can somebody help me out here? Kate Jackson is dangerous. Very dangerous. And this not even her whole resume. I put the fights down that I thought were significant. But Kate Jackson is a beast. She just didn't fight well against Aaliyah Lay McFarlane. Now, let's take it home. Okay, Juliana Velasquez. This is Juliana's resume. I want you guys to take a look, okay? 
She got a fight against, uh, what, Nan Lang, and I should have put that in yellow. Yellow means, to me, the fight was insignificant, okay? She fought Nan Lang, okay? Look, this somebody, man, nobody knows anything about her. And pretty much, man, she's going eight and four, okay? It's just a win she got over there in Bellator. She won that fight, and that was a fight that she was supposed to win. This woman ain't fought nobody. Rebecca Roof, God bless her. Rebecca Roof is 40 years old. She beat the hell out of 40-year-old Rebecca Roof. So, you know, those two fights to me were insignificant. They're very insignificant. The first two. Now, we get into the meat of her of her resume, okay? We get into Alejandro Laura, okay? Because, see, remember the first two fights that she fought. These fights, they're not going to get any attention, okay? Yeah, the submission and the kick to the body, she whooping ass. But against who? See, when we go back, each of the fighters that I showed you before, they had at least one significant win prior to that title shot. See, her first two fights, come on, man. No, they're not going to give her a title shot up the first two fights. Now, Jason, this is where I would agree with you. Here's where I agree with you right now. Okay, now, when she beat Laura and Christina Williams, me personally, I thought she should have got the next title shot. However, however, it was Kate Jackson's turn, okay? Kate Jackson had done enough work to get a title shot. I agree that Kate Jackson should have gotten a title shot, but after seeing Kate Jackson fight, like I said, it's almost like she didn't want to be there. Hell, she was acting like it wasn't a title fight. She just took an ass whooping. Juliana Velasquez, after beating Christina Williams and knocking out Christina Williams, I definitely 100% believe that she does deserve a title shot. And I think that she, she deserved a title shot before we have a Bellator Grand Prix. I believe that. Um, she fought Bruna Ellen. She beat the hell out of Bruna Ellen. Listen, okay, if Juliana Velasquez does not get the next title shot, if she don't get it, then I will co-sign that they're protecting her from Juliana Velasquez. I'll co-sign it. I can't do that now. I can't do it now. First of all, based on Alima Lee McFarlane's resume, okay? And let's do a recap of what I talked about. Okay, so a recap of what I talked about, okay? You know, again, guys, we go back to the resume. Let's go back to the resume of Alima Lee McFarlane, okay? Alejandro Laura is a tough opponent, y'all. If they wanted to protect her, they would have put her in there with somebody else. Hell, they would have gave her a kill host. They would have gave her somebody else, okay? But they gave her Laura, one of the toughest damn fighters in the whole division. She beat her. Okay, she submitted her. Laura is no joke. Okay, they put her in there with, with veteran, UFC veteran Valerie Letourneau, who was on a two-fight win streak. They put her on there. She submitted her. Do y'all see a pattern? They put her in there with Vader Atiaka. Remember I told you, okay, a significant win. Vader had a significant win against Denise Kilholz. She went in there, she stopped Vader Atiaka. Vader Atiaka ain't never been stopped. She got stopped that time. And she put her in there with the Brit, Kate Jackson, who was winning. Kate Jackson was winning. Okay? They could have protected her from Kate Jackson. So why would they put her in there with Jackson, Laura, and Letourneau if they're trying to protect her? I can't I can't see it. But I will co-sign whatever you say. If Juliana Velasquez does not get the next title shot, then I will have to con I, I will have to concede. I will have to concede that she's being protected. But until then time must wait and see they, the buzz was already being made okay the buzz was already being made that juliana velasquez deserves a title shot and juliana velasquez put it out there and i'm actually trying to get a hold of juliana i'm trying to get a hold of her because she said you know what i deserve a title shot and to me i thought her fighting bruna ellen was a waste of time and i start thinking why did they put her in there with bruna ellen why the hell did they do that why would they do that it, it didn't make sense to me at the time you know but the thing of it is, they had to find somebody for her to fight. They had to. Because Kate Jackson had already been promised a title shot. They had already booked that fight. The training camps had already been started, okay? The training camps had already been started. So they weren't going to back out of that and give Juliana Velasquez a title shot, okay, after the fights had already been signed. I believe in my humble opinion, okay, that Juliana Velasquez will probably get the next title shot. If she don't, then Jason, she's being protected. But as of right now, looking at her resume, they're not protecting her. They're not protecting her. 
but who else should who else who else is left? If she beats Juliana Velasquez, she's gonna clean out the damn division. She gonna clean out the division. And if, now if that fight gets signed, and if she fights Velasquez next, what are y'all gonna say next? Is it true? It's your boy Coach Sheldon Harrison. I'm done. What are you waiting on? Subscribe to the best women's MMA platform on YouTube.